The topic for today's video, if you could only have one limiter, what would you choose? For me, it's the DMG track limit, hands down. I really only use this and the FabFilter Pro L. And in real life, in actually producing and mixing music, I always go with the DMG track limit, especially for speed and efficiency and the gain staging abilities it offers you, how flexible and quick that is compared to something like the Fab Filter, where you don't really have a gain match control. There's a button you can hit where your output level doesn't change, but then to gain stage it, you have to click that off and then you still have to adjust the volume. And that's just one extra step. And it's the main reason why I go with the track limit. There's just fewer controls. It's very streamlined and does what I want it to do. So we'll be looking at an example of me using the track limit on a bunch of different sources here in just a second. My approach to limiting really has changed over the years. It used to be something I would do only if I really noticed like, ooh, this peak is sticking out on like a drum hit or something to where I tend to wanna to put a limiter on very early in almost all of my processing chains, especially for primary main elements, because I find it actually helps me with my other processors. Like using a compressor to me is easier after I've done some peak limiting. So if I know, do I wanna to try to bring some of this transient back out? You know, what am I trying to accomplish with the compressor? I've always found that it becomes a little easier to do that after you've done some peak limiting. Not gonna be for everybody, not saying that that's the, that's the approach every single time. But for me, that can be useful. Also, you get a little bit of a clearer picture of what your final mix, what your final mastered version is going to sound like when you work this way and you do a lot of peak limiting just as you're going along. So when you get to the final mastering stage, the final little bit of maximization, you're barely tickling those peaks at all and you're right to that luffs level that you wanna be. And it's something that you get used to doing and you kind of have a sense for how loud things should be. Um, and I found that that's really helpful because what I used to do would be very little peak limiting. I'd get to the mastering stage. I'd be like, ooh, here comes the fun part. I'm going to jack up this maximizer and get me to that loudness level only to find that my mix would really fall apart. The balances would completely change. And so that's why I've kind of learned to, to work and do things this way. Not saying it's the right way, but it's just um, the reason why this video is kind of useful because I need this limiter. It's a very important tool for me. Um, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at an example of me using it in some different contexts. So let's go. Here we have a bit of an eclectic eight bar loop going. So you get the gist of that and we'll be using it for our example of all of these videos in this series. This one is definitely the easiest for me to make a selection on. It was really a no brainer, but I just thought I'd go over Pretty much these are the only ones that I have, and some of them I don't really even use. Max volume, you guys kind of know this one. This is just on the drums, I believe. I could give up this high level peak, peak limiter because really if I just had access to this low level control here, I'd be happy enough and good enough with that. So we're gonna go ahead and eliminate that straight away. The Ozone 9 Maximizer, I actually do not use. I don't use it on the master bus. I like some of the other tools from Ozone. I don't know why I don't use this, but I just don't. Let's see if there's any good little preset we can bring in right away. We're gonna have to drive it, I suppose. And this one's really designed more for your master bus. And yeah, I mean, that sounds good. I'm sure it would work and it would probably work on the master bus, but that's just too cumbersome for me to use. And I actually do use limiters on tracks very regularly, in fact, super frequently. So that would be just a little bit too unruly and, and complicated for me to use on every single track. It would probably also take way too much CPU. This is another limiter that I have that I do use on the master bus. So I will sometimes try out all of these different modules on the master bus. And sometimes this thing just works amazingly, but we have a peak limiter here that we can look out. And then also our true peak limiter that occurs here at the output stage. So, all right. The reason why this would never work is because I don't have like an output knob here somewhere at the end. And 
And yeah, this one actually sounds really good, especially when you abuse it. But similar situation, like I couldn't see myself applying that onto every track. So that one's gonna get eliminated, even though it does sound good, even though I do use it. If I had to give it up, I probably could. Next up, we have the track limit from DMG. And this one's very simple and straightforward to work with. some artifacts on and then the other one we have is the fab filter pro l okay this is if you've seen that video where um, skrillex shows a track or somebody shows a skrillex track you see this thing plastered all over that um, here's the way that i would work with the pro l if it was on an individual track Typically modern sounds really, really good on most signals. And for me, it's really a no brainer. The only one that I would want to keep if I had to give everything else away would be the track limit, mainly just for the speed and the efficiency of it. So it's very quick and easy to turn gain link on, to dial this in, to then determine the style you want, to figure out your release. You do have a st an unlink stereo control if you want it, if you want to process the left and the right separately, that will throw off the stereo image a little bit, but sometimes that actually can be a, a preferable effect. So it's something to consider messing around with. You can even bring in kind of a percentage too, if you you want to try to dial something in don't use it that often but it is there um, and then we have our final gain stage where i could turn this off and then you know get myself ready for whatever the next processor is and that's useful for the way that i work with limiters because i will drop them in all over the place relatively low cpu footprint compared to a lot of the other stuff and yeah it's just great so let's just go through and we're going to limit all of these tracks i'll do it you know off camera i'll set them all up and then we'll hear the difference that it makes off and on Alrighty, so we can see all of our various setups on the drums, on the percussion, on the sitar, on the guitar, on the bass. And that's with all of them off. So as you can see, we were even able to use, I think, all of the different modes here. I just want to, to showcase that and all the various ways that um, these were set up on the track. And that was all done quickly. So I was able to fine tune those and get them set to where I wanted to in just a couple of minutes. Whereas I think even with the Pro L, which would be my second choice here, it would probably take me about twice as long to do kind of the gain staging. And I'd be wanting to fiddle around a lot with attack and release times. And with this one, it just seems to happen a lot quicker. Um, so anyway, that's going to do it for this video on if I could only have one limiter. Um, luckily, we have options for more than one, so we don't have to worry about that. But um, in this case, I think... I think I could live with just one and it would be just fine and dandy. So I hope everybody has a wonderful day and take care.